Hi, and welcome back to my channel. So today I want to talk about some of my favorite nonfiction recommendations, as well as a few nonfiction books I'm hoping to pick up, um, because not only are there several other um, like readathons or events going on in November, but I know a lot of people like to focus on nonfiction November, and I do believe there's actually a readathon going on there too, but I'm not sure who's running it. I just know I've heard about it. Um, but I love that my book club always focuses on nonfiction in November because it does push me to read outside my comfort zone because I typically am a very large um, fiction reader. But as I kind of started to write down some of my favorites that I've read in the past, I was like, oh, I actually, I have been enjoying a good amount of nonfiction um, that I, I might not have thought about before. So... Uh, like I said, I'm going to go ahead with some of my recommendations first, and then at the end, um, I'm going to list a few books that I hope to pick up soon as well. Now, <laughs> most of these I do actually own. I think one of them I've already sold, but I don't have them with me because some of these were so good that I've already loaned them out for other people to read. So let's get started. The very first one is If You Tell by Greg Olson holy cow. If I, <laughs> I had to keep telling myself that this book was actually real and this was happening and this woman, this mother is currently in prison. I believe she's actually supposed to get out in 2022. Um, because I can't believe the things that she did to her family and people that she knew just completely unbelievable. Um, it's one of those stories you have to go in knowing that some really sketchy things are gonna happen um, and some really horrific things. Uh, but it is it's basically told from her daughter's perspectives of growing up with this mother. And of course I can't think of their names, but it, I think we read this two years ago and it is still probably the number one nonfiction book that I recommend to people. The second one actually made my top five favorite audiobooks of all time, and that is Born a Crime by Trevor Noah. I love this book. Um, now, if you're not familiar with Trevor Noah, I think a lot of the times he's known for being kind of um, a comedian, and a lot of times it's more of like a political comedian, but his book is all about growing up in South Africa during apartheid. Um, his mom was black, his dad was white, um, and you get all kinds of different perspectives of his life, but it is so funny. And I think that's why I suggest the audiobook because he narrates the audiobook and the way he mimics his mom's accent or his grandmother or, oh my God, the stories that he has from his childhood. It's just so funny. And I didn't expect that out of a book about talking about growing up with apartheid and so it is by far like the number one audiobook that I suggest. I think the only problem is it's an Audible exclusive. So highly, if you pick one book from Audible, that would be it. The next one is a little bit more of a serious one. Um, I read this book last year and I would say it's by far the most impactful book, especially nonfiction wise, that I read last year. And that's The Only Plane in the Sky. Um, and the author's last name is Graf. I can't remember what his first name is, but obviously I'll have it here and linked below. Um, but this is an oral retelling of 9-11. And once again, this is one that I highly suggest the audiobook for. It's a full cast. Um, some of the cast are actually people that were part of the events of 9-11. And you are going through different um, aspects, being on the plane, being at the penthouse, um, the Pentagon, not the penthouse. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Um, and the Twin Towers. And you're getting like actual audio from phone calls from the plane. It is a very powerful but very hard to read book. But I highly recommend. I read it around 9-11 last year and that book will stick with me for a very long time. The next one was kind of a fun one and I never expected to pick this one up. And that's The Comfort Book by Matt Haig. Um, he wrote The Midnight Library and so I was kind of looking into other things that he had written and at first when I picked this one up I didn't realize that it was nonfiction. I believe if I'm recalling it, it's told in verse and 
it's a lot of like really wise life wisdom and um, I didn't realize that he had had some really dark times in his life and so this book kind of works on you know talking people through that um, and not necessarily that I had dealt with that but just a lot of positive experience and words in this book that I really quite enjoyed and there were so many quotes that if I was a person that would write in my books there were a lot of things that I would highlight in this book because it was just really positive ways of looking at things and coming out from that so one of the other ones that I read last year that I really enjoyed uh, the next one is a book that we did for our book club and this is another nonfiction that read like a fiction and that was High Achiever by Tiffany Jenkins. I do believe a lot of people know her from like the sketches and skits that she's done on social media um, and she does a lot with her family and like she talks about like her brain being personalities and I've seen some of her skits but this book was actually about her drug addiction and the fact that she was dating a police officer or a sheriff I think while she was basically high on drugs all the time and the ways that she would go about trying to get drugs and it was a very interesting read I mean a horrible topic but just the way she kind of worked around that and and she talks about you know she ended up going to jail for the things that she did and so it, it was a very, very interesting book to read. And that's another one that if you do listen to the audiobook, she also narrates that one. Um, so it was very good. And and I've noticed that with nonfiction too. I probably tend to stray towards like the memoir, um, biography, autobiography um, genre because nonfiction has so many like um, subgenres in it. But some of these other ones are going to be different as well. Oh, this next one. I had heard about this one, I think all over booktube, several people had read it. And I am really, really happy I picked it up. And that was The Sun Does Shine by Anthony Ray Hinton. Um, Hinton, excuse me. He was a man that got put on death row wrongly. He was wrongly accused and wrongly convicted um, of a murder. And even though they basically had proof that he could have never done it, they still convicted him. And it talks about a lot of the justice system in the time that this happened. I think it was the 80s. Um, and just how it didn't matter because it was the color of his skin that they said, nope, he probably did it. We'll just put him away. It's fine. Um, I think at even one point in the book, it was... Well, someone like him did it, so it's fine. Um, and he talks about the connections that he makes on death row with these people that he never thought he would have this interaction with. And it's one of those, I highly suggest you pick it up. It's it's a definitely an eye-opening book, which I feel like a lot of nonfiction can be. Um, the last two I have were kind of more fun ones um, that I've read. The first here is Dear, uh, Dear Fahrenheit 451 by Annie Spence. And this was all about um, her reflection on different books and literature. And it was just so interesting. And I, I can't even remember like the specific things that she references. Um, but it, it's basically her take on all of these different books that she's read. And I really quite enjoyed it. And it was a quick read if I remember correctly. So that one was fun. And then my very last one was another one of my favorite audiobooks to listen to. And that's Talking As Fast As I Can by Lauren Graham because she narrates it. And like I've said, um, I actually mentioned it in my November releases because she's coming out with a new book. Lauren Graham played Lorelai Gilmore um, on Gilmore Girls and she was also a character on Parenthood. And so being able to listen to her book um, in her voice is just, I like it because Gilmore Girls is kind of a comfort thing for me. And so I really enjoyed listening to that one. And that one is all about um, basically her acting career and, you know, becoming who she was while she was doing all of that. So I really liked that one. All right, so these next ones that I'm going to list are ones that I am hoping to pick up. Now, I can almost guarantee I am not going to pick all of these up in the month of November. It'll just never happen, especially because I have hopes of participating in Historathon uh, 3.0 and I don't know if I can go a whole month without reading a thriller. So, but these are books that I have either heard about after doing a little bit of research and watching some other people's books about nonfiction November or books that I've already had kind of in my mind um, for TBRs that I just haven't picked up yet. Um, the first one I actually heard about from um, Sarah and Lindsay uh, 
uh, Sarah at Sarah's Nightstand and Lindsay from Lindsay's Little Library, they both had mentioned in their, I think it was top five books that are nonfiction that read like fiction. Um, and that was called The Fact of a Body. Um, I believe the author's last name is Marzano. Uh, I don't know much. I just remember the little blurb that they had, but it sounded fantastic. I'll link um, the description below. I'm really looking forward to picking that one up. And I know another one that Lindsay mentioned was Hillbilly Elegy. Um, the author's last name is Vance. That one sounded really interesting too. So I haven't done a ton of research on those two, but I usually take what Lindsay and Sarah say as that's a pretty good recommendation. So those will definitely be two that I'm looking forward to. Another one that I actually do have on my shelf right here. Um, and I know so many people have talked about this one. So I picked it up and then just haven't, haven't read it yet. And that's Unbroken um, by Laura Hillenbrand. Uh, I know it's a World War II story. Um, let's see. He was an athlete, um, ends up getting drafted. Um, and I think there's a lot of stuff going into everything that happens once he gets drafted. And I have heard that um, one of the characters from Gilmore Girls, unfortunately, I can't remember his actual name, but it's um, Lorelai's dad or Rory's grandfather. He is the one that reads the audiobook, and he must have done that before he passed away. So I will definitely probably pick up the audiobook when I read that one. And I just have a couple more to list. One also that I have on my shelves because I picked up this year. It's actually down here. And that one I know is going to be a tough read, um, but that's Columbine. And this is by Dave Cullen. It is quite the hefty book. I think this is going to take me quite a while to read just because A, it's very long and B, it's going to be a hefty topic. Um, I was fairly young when Columbine happened, but I still do remember like the coverage because it was pretty much the first nationally televised um, school shooting. And so I'm really interested to kind of see what this book shares and where it takes us. And, but I know the content is going to be hard to read, especially because I am a teacher and I work in schools. So, but it is one that I do want to pick up. Another one that um, hopefully makes my dear cousin Amanda's heart flutter is I would really like to pick up The Stranger Beside Me by Anne Rule. Um, I find myself getting more and more into the true crime um, and serial killer genre. And so that one is definitely one that I would like to pick up along with one that I already know I have on my Kindle, and that is Helter Skelter um, by Kurt Gentry and Vincent uh, Biglosi. Biglosi. Um, uh, and both of those books surround around serial killers. So I have several, obviously, that I would like to pick up. We'll see when I get my hands on them. Um, more than likely, some of them will be audiobooks because I just enjoy doing nonfiction that way. Um, but yeah, do you have any suggestions below? Are there other nonfiction books I should look at picking up or adding to my list? Are there any of them that I talked about that you might want to pick up? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks for joining to me today. And as always, like and subscribe and I will see you next time.